Hi, it's David Gom in the Stained Glass Studio, and on today's video, I thought I'd talk a little bit to you about soldering irons. And the reason is because over the last couple of months, we've had a lot of inquiries about different little tiny uh, aspects of soldering irons. So here we go. Um, when we first started out in the stained glass business, this is the iron we used. This is the Weller 100. It's a 100 watt temperature controlled iron. One of the things that's nice about it is it's got a lot of mass here in the body and the, of the soldering iron. Another thing is that it's got this knurled nut on the end. It allows you to unscrew the tip. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. This is the iron that we currently use. The reason we use this iron is because it's about one-fifth of the cost of a Weller 100. It will last about one-fifth of the time of a Weller 100. And so if you buy a Weller 100 for about a hundred bucks, now, or you buy five of these for the same price. See, they're going to be <laughs> they're, they're going to be the same amount of money either way you go. So this is the one we like because it's a pretty good pretty good iron. It's, it, we never have problems with it as far as heating up. However, it's got a little set screw in here, and uh, sometimes that set screw will get frozen. And so you won't be able to get the tip out. Then other times you can work the, the set screw loose, but then the tip itself gets caught in the soldering iron. And so all the way around, it, it, uh, it just doesn't last as long because the tips do wear out and do corrode. Now, when we were looking for a choice that was in between the least expensive and the most expensive, we found the inland, and this is the inland bit. It's a replacement bit. Let's see, if you look at the uh, pictures here on the Weller instructions, you see that this bit is the same as that one. And this one right here is the same as the one that's in the iron. So this just happens to be one of the replacements that we had for an inland iron. Now, that was our choice. We went between the Weller and the Choice iron. Right in between was the inland, price-wise and uh, quality-wise. But then we found we couldn't get them. They were, they were hard to come by. Um, manufacturing problems and, uh, and things involving the economy. So uh, that's our really the one that we thought was the best, but in fact that's what we had in the studio until they all wore out and then we replaced them with the choice soldering iron. Okay, so those are things about irons. Now one of the th things that people asked in, in one of the uh, uh, emails that someone sent us was uh, what temperature do they get to? And I went ahead and looked at some of the literature that I had, and it was all over the place. Some, some people didn't mention the temperature, and a couple of them had ranges. And really, uh, you need about 600 degrees in order to melt your solder and get a good flow. If you have solder that is lead-free solder, it requires a higher temperature to get it to flow. And so you'll, you'll want a hotter iron, but we don't, we don't try to get hotter irons in our studio, so we won't talk about those. However, I do want to talk a little bit about solder. This is 50-50 solder. It's the lowest uh, melting temperature. So if you have lead-free solder, then you'll need one of those hotter irons. Um, and we're not going to discuss those on this video because we don't use them in our studio. However, if you've got a hotter iron, you might want to be able to cool it down 
with a temperature control. This is a mini phaser to temperature control. It's also made by the Inland Company. And we like it because it's got a little LED on the front. So you won't accidentally leave it on. And, uh, and you just plug the iron in one end and the other end gets plugged into your power strip. And there you go. You're ready to, to change from 100% down to 50% if you want. Okay, the only other thing that we haven't talked about is um, this is a uh, Studio Pro soldering iron stand. It's the least expensive stand you can find, and I really like it. Isn't that great? It's cheap, and I like it. It's my favorite. It'll it kind of protects you if uh, if you have the iron resting in here the spring on the outside isn't as hot as it might be, and so you don't run the risk of getting burned. Now, talking about burns, this is lavender essential oil, and lavender oil is the best burn relief that I've found. Um, so you, you get a burn, it hurts, you put a little bit of this on, it get, you get pain relief almost immediately, it heals faster, it smells good, and there are antiseptic properties to it as well. And so it's a win-win. This is really the good stuff. I, I really like it. Um, liquid flux is great because it doesn't gum up the panel that you're soldering. And um, it flows on very nicely. It works good. Um, this is the kind of flux we always use. We, uh, we've tried other kinds. We keep coming back to this. So Jeannie, what, uh, what else can we tell people about soldering? I think you've just about hit all the points that they were concerned about. Okay, we did another video and it was called Tips on Tips. At the end of this video, there's gonna be one of those, you know, end cards that, that lets you go back to uh, some other suggested video. I highly recommend Tips on Tips because there are two tips on there. We're not going to go over the same things that were on that video, but they're interesting. So you should go to that and thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time.